And now it is time to catch up with the local fuckwad. And welcome back to the show. Do you ever have that one piece of media that you found out of nowhere? And even though it's been months you saw it and you keep thinking about it, you really want to talk to somebody who clearly doesn't know what you're talking about about it? Because that's the latest run I've gotten into. Now as some of you know, I use the social media site Letterboxd to post movie reviews. Sometimes I will get bored and scroll through movies endlessly and occasionally put some of those on my watch list. One of those movies caught my eye for a multitude of reasons. It's called Willy Milly, also known as Something Special and I was a teenage boy and whatever else you want to call it. Before we begin for real, I've just got to clarify. <laughs> Now then. So, Millie Willy, what is it about? If you weren't able to catch the innuendo in the title, depending on what you refer to this movie as, it's a movie where this girl named Millie becomes a boy named Willy. Based on the VHS cover, you'd think this movie is animated or at least has an opening title sequence, right? Nope, it's a fully live action movie, so I can't confirm there is no animation in this movie throughout its 80 minute runtime. So why does the cover use a cartoon drawing of the protagonist and not just use I don't know the movie's poster? I don't know. Now one of the things that did make me curious about this film a lot was definitely how the premise has some things we can relate to with our current contemporary modern society. In my eyes, I'd say that this comment kind of reflects most of the movie, but it's not the whole movie. Let's get into that right now. Now before I began watching, I did make sure to do some research and dear god, this is one of the most obscure things out there. I don't think anyone knows about this, even the people that were in it. Cause it's this obscure, you know what that means. All I can find from Wiki is that this was released in 1986 as a direct-to-video release, and that's it. After watching this, this does reek of TV movie quality, and to be fair, that was what the director specializes in. I also want to clarify that according to the opening credits, this film is based on some novel, which may or may not explain some more stuff. Also, I should bring up that this film isn't easy to find. Trying to find listings for the movie on eBay will usually give you listings for the movie's poster rather than the VHS. This, is, this wasn't received a DVD release, by the way. So of course I had to resort to piracy, thank you for asking. Now despite how unrecognizable this film is, there are some recognizable names attached to the project. I think easily to most people, they'll be able to recognize Seth Green because everyone just couldn't get enough of him back in the day. But a bing! There's also people like John Glover, who's known for his appearances in movies like Shazam, Robocop 2, and Batman and Robin. Then there's the person that plays the main character Millie in this film, Pamela Adlon. Some of you know her, some of you don't. I don't know you! Now that we know why this was made and who starred in it, is this a hidden gem? Well, from my experience, this film was definitely something alright. The movie starts with an opening montage of this kid here named Malcolm, played by Seth Green. Scoring huge at one too many yard sales, Malcolm is the kind of kid who's a whore when it comes to old knickknacks and useless junk. I feel violated. Malcolm is the next door neighbor to our protagonist, Millie, a teenage girl who's a total tomboy according to her parents because I guess telescopes are too fucking masculine in this day and age. By day and age, I mean 1986. 
Malcolm is always there to provide stuff for Millie, whether it be a pair of binoculars or a prank toy. Millie's best friend is another girl named Stephanie. Millie gets called by her mom to get ready for the high school dance. First off, what kind of dance is this? This has less production value than literally any of the dances that occurred at my middle school auditorium. I'm not making that shit up. But then again, it is the 80s after all. So Millie then acts feminine in one of the few moments where she acts acts as a stereotypical 80s movie girl character and is all like, you know what, Stephanie, I'm gonna ask a boy to dance with me. Stephanie is like, you wouldn't dare. And then she proceeds to ask a guy to dance with her and it's just all, I, uh, 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 uh. She blew it. What did you expect to happen? It's only a film trope. You know, I was just thinking, Doris, I never used that damn study of mine. And, well, I, what the hell? After getting home, Millie talks about how good boys have it. It compared to girls and thinks she would be better off being a boy. The next morning, or I guess night, because there's this weird continuity error between in scenes where it seems as though Malcolm giving so eclipse glasses during the day while Millie is summoning Satan at night. So Millie does this weird cult ritual thing of Stephanie that will do something with her gender. Stephanie doesn't think it's gonna work. Maybe we're getting our periods. So this happens and they go to sleep. Millie wakes up in the middle of the night and that's where we get to the big thing that most YouTubers would try to make a joke about not being able to show on YouTube without the risk of demonetization. I'm not making this shit up. It's censored because it's PG-13 but you pretty much get the idea. Millie wakes up Stephanie and tells her she has a whatchamacallit and Stephanie doesn't believe her at first. Okay, very funny. Joke's over. Joke! You got it at the corner store with the rubber spiders and the fake vomit, right? This is a guy's thing, Stephanie. Then it's not your thing. Of course it's my thing. Then it's not a guy's thing, it's your thing. They go back to sleep, it's still there. Stephanie tells then tells Millie's mom, because apparently Millie's not gonna do it herself, and then... No, Millie, what's the... It's official! Now back onto the gender dysphoria stuff that caught my attention. This is the point of the film where all of that begins to happen, and we're only 15 minutes in. You'd expect the way they'd handle this stuff to be more down to earth and relatable, right? Nah, the way they do this whole thing is that they go to the doctor and they just reassign his gender, stating, We were wrong! That's it! What the hell? And that is what you get if you base your entire premise on Pinocchio logic. So hey, I'm not expecting much. Afterwards, Millie has a chat with his parents on the elephant in the room, and you'd think maybe a lot of the movie would feature Millie's parents struggling to deal with this stuff, right? Mm, not really. There's a couple of moments where the parents are concerned over it, but these scenes are extremely brief. Instead, a lot of the movie is about Willie meeting this Alfie guy and his friends. They hide it out at a junkyard with old car scraps. As for why he's in a wheelchair, the film doesn't explain it besides telling you it has something to do with a sports related accident. My favorite! The two of them become best friends and this relationship is what we're stuck with seeing for a good chunk of the rest of the program. What the hell? A good problem I have with this film is that it's always forgetting to give characters relevance to the plot and borderline forgets them until they're needed for a scene again. And this happens a lot with Stephanie. Now I could say the same thing about Malcolm but his relevancy is even more severe. He disappears, he exists, and that's it. What the hell? And for a good chunk of the movie, things just happen. They're not presented in a way that keeps me off the edge of my seat, and the only noteworthy th scenes that happen between are the scene of Stephanie's hands on Willie <laughs> and Willie's mom talking to him about it. Oh, sweetheart, there's nothing to be ashamed of. In the most somewhat vague way possible. Like the scene does remember to follow the rule of show don't tell, but the wording of this dialogue is really vague. Hey, I'm recording this while I'm editing, and I just want to let you know that I am aware that there's a lot of inaccuracies with some of the way I'm describing the film's events, and that's because it's been a couple of months since I saw this, because I was hoping to get this out back in the, you know, the, the, the end of last year. Uh, luckily, I'll be linking that pirate link to the film in the description. Don't worry, it's safe. So if you want to see how the film is presented the right way, feel free to click on that. Shortly after this, we get a montage of Willie becoming a more masculine. Such activities that allow Willie to become more masculine include fighting your enemies in boxing, swearing in almost every fucking one of your single of your goddamn sentences, and not being allowed to like pink because pink's considered a girl's color in this day and age. Shut your bitch ass up. 
we could just see Willie embrace his newfound masculinity through this really weird edited montage. I this I didn't even I didn't even re-edit this for the purpose of the video. This happened in the film itself. It does this weird thing where it's gonna start one scene, cut to another, cut back to that scene that I already started with, start, do another scene from start to finish, and then end the first scene. I don't know why it does that. So blaze your blame towards our good old friend Michael Miller. Willie's friendship with Alfie is still the main focus, but a good chunk of it feels so boring. See if it's almost as if nothing's happening. Besides saying a slur, of course. And then out of nowhere there comes this other girl named Cynthia, who is introduced midway into the movie for almost no background besides snooty women and that's it. And somehow Willie gets a date with her. Now this sounds great. Let's see how they did it. Were they able to get great idea or is this another classic example of missed opportunity? Let's find out. So we come back to Act 3 and Willie meets Cynthia's brother Harry. Hi, nice one. Not only is the guy a complete dude bro. You are so funny. Uh, I... Um... Excuse me. I, I told you to keep your hand. But also a goddamn prick. What the hell? The day goes smoothly until Harry catches the two of them in the middle of their thing and goes total ass on. Like, calm down, dude. Why are you so acting for your sister? Then the movie ends with Stephanie finally getting relevance and their existence being acknowledged, and Willie apologizes to her with a piece of paper. That's it. What the hell? The two of them become friends again, and they undo the cult ritual that turns turned Willie into a dude, and he changes back into Millie. We go back to the school. I presume there's some sort of time skip between those events. Millie asks Alfie to dance with her, and he accepts, and the movie just ends with Malcolm just standing around. I'm not making this up. This is the last shot before the credits roll. It's just Malcolm minding his own business. He rolls out with his wagon. That's it! What the hell? That was definitely a thrill ride, of course, but not exactly the most thrilliest. So, what are my thoughts? I don't think it's bad because being dated or some of the more modern stuff that, the, that could cause this film to get relevant to get, but because it just feels boring. I mean, to be fair, it was talking a lot while I was trying to get through it, which is something I think is pretty unhealthy. But still, the film feels like it has nothing going on for a good majority of it. All you just see is Willie and Alfie being boys for a good chunk of it. It has a problem with forgetting characters, especially Malcolm. And when it comes to which one of the characters gets forgotten the most, it's Malcolm by a long shot. He just appears, disappears, comes back 40 minutes later, disappears again, and comes back right before the end of the film. As for Stephanie, the film also forgets her as well, but they also try to remember that she does have an actual role. But what about the transitioning stuff? Is that the film's saving grace? I'll say it right now that it might depend on who you're asking, but to me, not really. And it's not because of something regarding it that makes it outdated or transphobic, but just because the film does almost nothing with it. It's there and they acknowledge it on a semi-frequent basis like when the plot calls for it and I can respect that but the way it's handled is just putting Millie in any kind of scene involving a bunch of dudes or maybe one girl they do something and there's that one point of reference stated by either Millie or another character that makes him remember that he wasn't always a man that's it what the hell no I'm not saying that this film's depiction of transgender people is on the same level of how I was depicted in other films around this time, like the infamous transphobic joke in Ace Ventura, where you see Jim Carrey vomiting after that guy's a dude. What the hell? Surprisingly, this movie, this film's really respectful and for a good chunk of it. The problem stems from the fact for a movie where you could best describe the plot as having a transition, it just doesn't do anything with it. It's a missed opportunity. Despite this all being just a missed opportunity, that's not the movie's biggest problem. You know what the biggest problem actually is? The script. By this point, pretty much all of you should know by now that any kind of me's heart is the script, and that a good script is the equivalent of a healthy heart. So what's wrong with the script? Is the fact that a lot of this dysphoria stuff is underutilized or downplayed? No. Is the fact that this movie is complete 80s crud? No. What is it then? The pacing. The problem with the film's pacing is that it's what causes the film to feel boring like I already said. Pacing is extremely important in any piece of media to keep the viewer interested, and the pacing in Willy Milly needs a lot of work. The pacing is why we see a little too much of Willy and Alfie together, and very little of how the reassignment affects Willy's relationships with Carrie. 
actors like his parents and Stephanie. That's something I wish the movie focused on more, alongside actually giving Malcolm relevance to the plot and not just relegating him to the one character that exists. Lastly, after watching this, I'll admit it right now, this film just left me with more questions than answers. Does Pamela Adlons remember doing this? Does Seth Green remember doing this? Does John Glover remember doing this? Those are only some of the questions I have. And it's been months since I saw this. I watched this back in September, but so much of this I still have stuck in my head. Mainly because it's taken me months to complete this issue, for a reason I'll get into a minute. But to briefly summarize my thoughts, Willy Nilly is a bizarre experience. That's one of the most 80s things I've ever seen. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's just an extremely disappointing and boring flick that doesn't do much of its interesting premise. But keep in mind, I identify as an effector. That's code. But in the end, all I can say about it is that, at least I tried. What the hell? I'll be honest with you right now, I made it right now. I was debating the decision to make this for a while now. Many of you haven't solved the secret puzzle that's on my Twitter, and I was really scared I wouldn't be able to format my opinion in a way that was completely respectful. But with the help and feedback I got from my assistant to help me finalize the script, I think I've done the best I can do. Well, that's gonna do it for this issue. Join me next time when I once again struggle from self-doubt. I was only half a joke, I'm sometimes serious about that. See ya! <laughs> I took her to the movies, she was my beauty queen She was seated right beside me, till I saw her on the screen I tightly held her hand in mine, before she split the scene Now all I hold is a popcorn box, and there's my beauty queen What I need is happiness, the snack bar is the place A trailer wasn't too obvious